What's going on, everyone? It's Chris from 416 Coffee, and this is episode nine of the Beans and Business podcast, and I'm here with Ted from Rolling Pizza. So, Ted, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. What's up? Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. So, Ted, let's start with why why pizza? Why did you go into that industry? How did, how did you make that decision? So, yeah, basically, I mean, uh, my family's been in the business for quite some time, basically, um, when my dad immigrated here when he was in his 20s, he's almost 70 now. So <laughs> he's been, been been doing pizza basically his whole life, his family. Like he had cousins in the, um, in the country that kind of helped him out. And um, he was in that business for, you know, this entire time. So growing up, I was like exposed to that at an early age. And um, it was kind of second nature to me. I, I never wanted to be in that business. Yeah. Uh, growing up, I was like, that's the last thing I'll do. Um, you know, it's not a great business to be in just in terms of like, you know, the stuff that you have, you have to deal with, like the hours, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it just eventually it just brought me back to that. Uh, just, I, I always wanted to have my own business and I'm an entrepreneur at heart. So, um, yeah, it just, it basically brought me full circle to that and, um, no regrets. It's, it's where I am now. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just in my blood, I guess. <laughs> so you said you're an entrepreneur by heart. Like what kind of kid were you growing up? Like lemonade stand kind of kid hustler or what's the vibe? No, it was more so like, um, you know, just being exposed to my, uh, family business. Um, uh, they had restaurants and then like slowly real estate. And I just always was itching to do something for myself. And I worked for like tons of different companies, like you know, small companies, million dollar companies, multi-billion dollar companies. And, um, which was great. I had really good experiences, but at the end of it, I was always itching for like something else. So I would want to go to another company to make more money, to get more experience, to have a better position. And it just, it was never enough. And I kind of had enough of that. Um, I had like great experiences and great bosses, like never any problems in that respect, but I just needed to do something for myself. And I, that's the, I, I get very like claustrophobic with, um, you know, having limitations and same way. that's, that's the thing. Like being an entrepreneur is like difficult. It's shitty at times. It's like amazing at times, but it's like, I kind of, I don't have a boundary. Like you do have boundaries, but, but at the same time, like you, you can kind of keep building and that's kind of what, it's more of like a sickness. Like I can't go back to the other thing. You know what I mean? So I no, I totally understand. So it was funny. I think on one of the first podcasts I did with Jeremy, who does, I think he does your merch too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We worked with Jeremy. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to uh, peace and cotton. Um, yep. yeah. And he was, we had the exact same conversation where I was like the second there's like limitations or ceilings or anything imposed on me. I'm not interested in playing that game. Yeah. Like, I don't want to play the game. I want to play for like, you know, it, for example, with rolling pizza, you could build it as big as you possibly want to. You know yeah, what I mean? Like exactly. there's no, nothing stopping you. So no. So I get that. I get that drive. So when did you guys open? How was that first kind of few? Oh, you've been open for over a year now. Yeah. Just, just over two years oh, two now. Years. Yeah. yeah two same, years Cause you opened May, yeah. just, okay. You opened just before us. Cause we opened port in June. You opened in May. Oh, okay. You guys were June. Okay. That's what I was kind of thinking. Yeah. I couldn't remember because you guys were like very similar time periods. So like we've both gone through like, um, you know, opening a new business, then like, you know, COVID happening and now <laughs> COVID like ending. And it's like, that's what I like. I'm obsessed with like numbers and like financial and like, how did we do last year? How did we do last month? And it's like, I like obsess over that stuff. You have like, no reliable sec data <laughs> secretly. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't have no data and it's like, uh, and, and it irritates me because I like, I need to know information, especially information I don't have right now. I need to know future information. Like I'm, I'm, I have like this sickness where I need to know <laughs> it and it drives me nuts. But, um, yeah. So in terms of how we open, like kind of a really long story, but, um, uh, basically my partner, Jennifer, we, we met our, at our last place of work. Um, so we worked for an ad tech company in Toronto. Okay. Um, basically a software company. Um, so we worked there for about like, I think it was just over like four and a half years. Shit. Okay. Uh, so a long stint. It was our, it was my longest. So it was, a, honestly, it was like the best job, the easiest, like work-life balance, younger people, 
unlimited vacation policy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So like you could work from home, like you were learning a lot. Like it was an industry. So software is like kind of very similar. It's like you, there's always new stuff and you're always learning stuff. And like, I was there for four years. I had two different roles, but like I still didn't learn like a fraction of the stuff. Like it was, I was very challenged and it was a very difficult like thing to learn like software stuff when you're not really like don't have a background in it as well. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's a whole other story, but yeah, we, we met there and, um, yeah, I wanted to do something different again. Like it was like, I don't know however many, I didn't, I haven't had like a crazy amount of jobs, like maybe like my, you know, third or fourth, like corporate job, I suppose. Uh, but it was like itching for something else. So I already had one position in that company. I got uh, another position. It was more technical, more, you know, more challenging, more interesting, but I still like, and I was like, oh, like, you know, our, our like millennials, like the newer generations, they don't stick a, to jobs for like 20, like 25 years. Like they used to every four years, they're in a new job. And I'm like, well, wh- what's going to be next? And then I got to like commute and then like this on the other. And then like, we had like, um, me and my family had a, acquired a property here like as an investment like my dad was always looking for investment properties and then I wanted to invest money too and then I was like well I don't have any partners to like business partners I was like in my whatever let's say early 30s um and I was like okay like let's do this for investment and then kind of everything just like started going together we're like oh, okay like there's a couple empty units in there you know I, w- I was in the restaurant business like uh growing up in it my my father is obsessed with it. Um, and then I'm just like, okay, like, why don't we just try this? And then, yeah, in the meantime, I met, I met, uh, Jennifer and she had a culinary background. Oh, okay. she was I didn't always, know that. yeah. So she went to George Brown. Um, sh- uh, she did culinary there. She was always like a foodie at heart and like me too. Like literally we, we talk about it now and it's like, even when we travel, like we do food stuff. Like yeah. that's how, when we like go out, like we, we see things and do things through food and it's like, yeah, other people are like, Oh, we'll have a hobby, do this, that. And it's like, ours is like food. Like we'll, we'll go to multiple places. We'll have multiple, you know, different types of food. And we just, that's how we like experiencing things, especially in like other countries. Like we find that's the best way to kind of experience things. Um, so yeah, that kind of all, we were like having these conversations and then Jen, she's, she's a very like street smart person. So she'll like, you know, even with our business, she's responsible, responsible for like putting new items on their marketing, branding, social media. Like she's very savvy with that stuff. So that's why like we have a good, like complimentary relationship Skill with set. that. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, that kind of all spiraled into this thing, you know, it was kind of, um, it was my first real business too. And Jen's first real business, I knew what I was getting into and I didn't like, just imagine like, I was like, I'm never going to do this. And then I was doing like, that's how sick, like I am like <laughs> one, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. even to this day, like I'll like bitch and complain about stuff. And my mom's like, well, you wanted it. I told you not to do it. And I was like, Oh, whatever. I, I deserve it. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, I kind of just like became this thing. And then one thing led to another and there was like people calling to lease out the space. And like one person was interested in a pizzeria and I was like, I was secretly like jealous and like annoyed and I'm like, well, if someone's going to put a pizzeria there, like it should be me. Yeah. And then it kind of like became this thing and then, you know, it became like this huge project. So (laughs) there you go. So was that like the genesis of the idea or had you already been kind of planning? Have you been thinking about the pizzeria thing? So like when I, when I would work at other places, like other corporations and stuff, I was secretly in the back of my head it was like oh screw this place I can go do my own restaurant like you know it'd be like my like thing I had in the back of my mind but um yeah it didn't really start becoming a concept till like you know uh 40 50 60 like 2017 18 okay and we started talking about it more we started like being like well what would we call it and like oh well what would we do what kind of stuff would we have what kind of kind of like clientele would we want and like you know things like that so it started becoming like a concept more like yeah 2017 2018 and yeah yeah, just kind of grew from there what do you think 
helped make you guys stand out? Because obviously it's been two years. You guys are you guys are very successful. Um, I mean, it's a fantastic product. But beyond that, what what do you think helped helped you guys stand out? So that's the thing. Like, um, you know, I don't know how the coffee, you know, espresso market is. It's, it's similar. Uh, the pizza business is like exceptionally saturated. Yes. Like I can go walk down each corner that has like a commercial property and there's a pizzeria in there. And it's like, yeah, what, that was the most difficult thing. Like what's going to set you apart? Cause when I was growing up, like in my family's business, I was always like, okay, like they're in this for like 10 years. It's been 15 years. It's been 20. Like, are people going to get sick of this food? And it's like, we wanted to do something different. So that's why we kind of have like, you know, our, I guess like our signature pizzas are a little different. We offer like, um, uh, more of a, uh, variety with like vegan foods and vegetarian stuff as well. Um, so that's, you know, and then kind of like trying to tackle social media. So that's kind of what we have as like a unique, you know, thing, thing. in our business. Yeah. Um, you know, I look at some of these other restaurants and pizzerias and they have terrible, terrible branding. Like it's like, yeah, it's just like, you know, you go on like clip art and just like, take yeah, like it's, the, awful. it's yeah. terrible. So it's like, and it's like, yeah, ours isn't amazing either. Cause it's like, it, believe me, like, uh, I don't know with you guys, like when you got your like branding and naming, like you've obviously taken it to another level. Like with us, we had to like create it from scratch and like Same. everything's yeah. been taken. So uh -huh. it's like, oh my God, what name that was. That was the hardest part of the business is coming up with a name and a brand. That was the most time consuming thing. Everything else is like, you know, dealing with engineers and like designers and like all this other crap, like that stuff's frustrating, time consuming, but the most like stressful and time consuming thing was like the branding and the name because every name in the book is taken. Yeah. I guess with so, so many pizzerias, right? Like yeah. It's just, <laughs> and even just anything, like people have just taken everything and made it into a business and like registered the name. So it's, it was, uh, you know, very, like, very frustrating thing for me anyway. No, I, I, I feel that. So with your, with your signature pizzas, with some of the specialty stuff that you do, do you find like, cause I find it personally, it's like, you're kind of only as good as your last at bat. Like, okay, so we make like a new drink. People love it, yeah. but it's like that wears out. Now I got to come up with something fresh and new. Like, yeah. So we're constantly trying to do that. And it's, it's a lot harder than it seems. So we, we try to pull like new signature pizzas, but it's tough because you don't want to do something too crazy. Cause people are like, even like the big Papa that we have, people either like terribly hate it or are obsessed with it. Which is good. Like, that works. Other stuff, like, it may not work. Uh, people also want to associate with familiarity. So, like, sometimes simple is better. And it's just a little different. So, yeah, you got to constantly, like, I'm, like, a firm believer in business where, um, you know, if you're not constantly growing, you're basically dying. And it's 100%. true. 100%. I mean, but still, you can die for 10 years. Like, oh, yeah. But it's, like, I don't want to do that. It's also hard to kind of stay on top of things, but you have to like, you have to constantly like keep at it. So putting new stuff, changing stuff, taking stuff away, trying to promote. So it's just like, it's a constant, like it's a constant battle and there's no like, there's no real strategy like for us anyways. So it's just like, whatever, like sometimes we'll like, you know, Jen will wake up and be like, oh, I've got this idea. She'll try something out. Tastes like crap try something out it's amazing so it's like it's a constant like it's kind of like a you know it's a numbers game so yeah absolutely and then obviously working on the economics of like if you have to bring in new new toppings for that particular pizza that's, or whatever yeah, right yeah that's the problem because it's like we especially when we first opened like we had like a few more things but like we had such a wide variety and like toppings like we had like one prep table and we were like all crashing into each other then I got like this other one because I was like, okay, let's spread, put some vegan stuff here, like spread things out. People didn't like it. And then now it's like, oh my God, if we didn't have that, like we would die. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, we want to put a new thing. Like we're trying to like, it, you want to try to like recycle the stuff you have, but like you also don't want to be like, oh, it's the same crap. Yeah. So putting new stuff, it's hard because you're also at a, we're at a big physical limitation in terms of space. Like we're like under like, you know, like 900 square feet. I know so about it's like, that. 
it's tough like because for pizza too you got like huge ovens you have like a huge hood you got like fryers you got to like stack all your pizzas you got to put dough like it's like it's hard and we didn't really you know plan for that so it's uh yeah it's always a battle but we always you know invent new ways i guess i and yeah i definitely understand the space limitations because like every time i'm in port i want to rip my hair out no because it's, <laughs> yeah it's a constant struggle there for sure um so what would you say over the first like couple years what what do you think was like the biggest stumbling point some of the biggest challenges you had so like yeah it's been just over two years now and it's like I feel now, like, yeah, Jen feels the same, I think, because we're kind of, like, starting to get a comfortable, like, you know, grasp around the business, um, whereas before, we were just, like, running around. Like, I, I've never been so tired in my entire life, and, like, we weren't even open seven days a week. We were only open seven days a week, like, at the beginning when we first opened, but, um, yeah, it was, like, the beginning of just like, you know, all those pain points of like, I knew the business, but like we ran into like these new like situations with space, with all this stuff, training all these people. Oh, so staff, yeah. It's, it's tough. Like, cause like in food business, you have to have more staff. Like you just have to have bodies there because it's like, you know, it's like you ha you're, you know, you're a country, you have to have a military in case you go to war. If you don't have a military, you don't have any ammunition. Like, you're done. Same in the, in the restaurant business, the same thing. It's like, I need to have X amount of people there no matter what, because I don't, there's no, like, nobody's been able to be like, Hey, we've developed an algorithm of people's like food behavior. And like, these are the busy times. These are like, have this much stuff. It's like no idea. And then I like, even with all the stuff that's been going on, I still have no clue. So you got to be prepared. You know, when you go to war, you're, you're adequately equipped. You have this, you have the, you know, the people and all that stuff. So yeah, getting everybody ramped up was hard. Like, you know, training people with all the different dishes. And when you add unique things that other people don't have, it brings you business and it's good for business, but it's a huge headache in terms of like sustaining it, training everybody, making sure they're doing it properly. You know, what's the vegan version of this? What's that signature pizza? Oh, this one's no, this, no, that. And like staying on top of that and like, yeah, starting up was like really tough with that. Plus you were like stressed, like financially, like it was a huge endeavor, like lots of money, like e the equipment that's needed in the pizza business is usually more than like, if I open like, you know, some poutine stand or like yeah, yeah, whatever, exactly. yeah. like, you know, just have like a couple, you know, tables and stuff. It's like the hundreds of thousands of dollars, like just like, is anybody going to walk in the door? <laughs> The first day, literally, I knew, had no idea what to expect. We trained people on the weekend. We didn't even do any grand opening, any soft, kind of a soft opening, but like nothing really announced because we didn't know what to expect. But people came in. So I was like, okay, that was great. And then, yeah, COVID hit. And like, you know, unfortunately, there were lots of businesses that were like not doing well, couldn't even operate. And it was awful for us. We got lucky. It was like, the complete opposite, crazy, crazy business. So like ramping up for that, reaching like capacities where I never thought we would, you know, not take any more orders. Cause we just, we couldn't, we were like wearing the staff down and it was just like losing control of the kitchen, which is like the worst thing I've experienced. Um, and it's just like, yeah, dealing with that and like unknowns and, you know, uncertainties, like, what is COVID? Like, what is all this stuff? Like, how long is it going to last? What's oh, people's, exactly, yeah. people's behaviors now, people's behaviors after, like, we want to make sure we're continue to be sustainable. So it was like, yeah, those were like the biggest, biggest, toughest challenges. And like, I couldn't even ask like, you know, my father for, I asked advice, but like, he didn't have experience. And he's like, I don't know what the heck this thing is. Like, no idea. So we just kind of, my dad would be there for like 12 hour days until like, we were like, do we hire more people? Like, is this just like a fluke? Like, and then, yeah, things definitely cooled off, but it was like, that was like one of the most difficult physical, mentally, emotionally exhausting times of our, of our lives. I think, so. Yeah, no COVID was bizarre for, for us as well, because like you, we were able to stay open. And to be honest with you, like, like it was, it was almost beneficial because there was, there was nothing to do. So people would get a coffee, yeah. go for a walk in port. Right. But, um, 
yeah, it was completely bizarre. And like you said, I had, I have like, you know, mentors, like business people that I speak to and no one had, yeah, no one had a clue. Right. Cause yeah. it's like, no one knew how long it was going to go on for. I remember when it first happened, I was like yeah, two weeks, yeah. three, <laughs> fuck. Like we're, we're good. We're back by May for it's sure. It's not going to last. Yeah. No. Yeah. They can't keep us inside. <laughs> like no yeah. one's going to stay. And then I'm like, oh shit. Like this is actually, this is happening. So, yeah. and then like you said, like people's behavior, like people going from, you know, contact was everything, like yeah. systems for that. And then now seeing people kind of get back into their like more normal routines and things like that. So yeah. yeah. But like, like you said too, no data, none. Cause we had our same as you, we had about, you know, a chunk of time open COVID hits. And then now it's like, I have no, I have no numbers to go off for this year. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely like, um, really frustrating at, at the time. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, for me, like I, I, I don't have any regrets. Like I took as much advantage of it as I could. And I wanted to, you, you also have this expectation of like, you know, I have, I have the, you know, we have the employees to deal with. We're like, you know, burning them out, but then we also have customers like they call, they come in, they expect you to like give you, you know, you to give them food. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, what do you mean? Like you, you're not taking any more orders for the day. So it was like jamming that in and like trying to satisfy everybody at the same time. Plus it's like, Oh, I think I was exposed to COVID. I can't come into work. So like when the pandemic first came, like people weren't comfortable working. Yeah. And then there was like, Oh, uh, you know, my, my parents said, I, I, I can't work as much. Oh, I think uh, my friends blah 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 had it, and I I think I was exposed. I can't come to work for two weeks. So, at the beginning, we were just like, okay, like we're just gonna close for a month, like make a vacation out of it for everybody. At that weekend before, we were just like running around like jackasses, and it's just like, okay, we need to just kind of regroup. Yeah. So we had been open for, uh, yeah, not even a year, just just under a year at that point, and then, yeah, it's like just just goes to show like instead of like being like hey like let's take a month off whatever we were just like obsessed with like doing new menu items like what are we going to change in the menu like how are we going to execute like the next year and like we basically revamped our menu and like with that it like you know coincidental with COVID as well it just kind of like cascaded into this like next like you know nine months of like crazy busy so um yeah and then it was just like non-stop and know kind of just chilled recently so so um during kind of covid during the past i guess two years so covid everything what do you think your biggest challenges were as a leader because obviously you employ a good amount of people what were some of your challenges what what was tough about leading people through like complete uncertainty yeah i mean i guess a few things like people's like safety and all that stuff like people weren't comfortable like you know we were it wanted to make sure people felt comfortable coming to work like that's a very important thing to me um and it's tough when you got like 20 people like yeah not all at once but maybe like you know up to like 12 people at in, like one small space um we want to make sure like everybody gets along everyone's comfortable but like in terms of like covid it was like yeah like I, i'm i'm a I'm more of like, I guess an aggressive person. So like when there's business out there, like I'll, I'll take it all. You know what I mean? So, uh, when it got busy, like I would take on, tend to take on more than yeah. I should have at times. And I've been heavily criticized because of that from multiple people. <laughs> I feel what, what, okay. So what do you, <laughs> what, what do you mean? Like by taking so, on more, you mean you're just working like insane hours or no, just taking on more orders than we were capable of like, uh, producing. <laughs> like okay. it, it, it was, I never thought I'd have that yeah. problem. It was, it, it was obviously like a, uh, you know, um, a period of time that that only happened, but like we started creating like, you know, we would get so many orders and I would just take them be like, Hey, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And now you've taken like all these orders and you're telling everyone the same time, which was stupid. Yeah. But I was like, I guess greedy or whatever. I wanted to also please everybody. Yeah. Um, so we created like this timetable of like the maximum amount of orders we could handle in a 15 minute time slot that didn't come till after. But before that it was like, yeah, like there, you know, there were times where I took on too much and like as a leader, people, 
people look like when I was growing up in the restaurant business and like my dad was there, I felt comfortable. And it's like, okay, like some shit happens. Like, okay, it's my dad's problem really. Yeah. So like when you have your own business, it's like, oh fuck, people are like looking at you. Like, what do we do? So like, you know, there's been a handful of times where we've like literally drowned in the kitchen. Like when one thing spirals out of control, it's, it's a two hour, like you're treading water for two hours. Yeah. It's a terrible feeling. Um, we've experienced it. I mean, I get some adrenaline out of it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, as a leader, people look up to you, you know, to kind of like fix this or like, you know, I, and then I, I kind of got better at it where I was just like, okay, we're not answering any more phones. Nobody's answering more phones. Take care of the customers that are waiting. Like, cause with COVID it's like only two, three people are allowed in the store. So they were like wrapped around, you know, the building there and like, I was like prioritizing, like taking on more orders instead of like, you know, the people that are like waiting to pick up their orders. So yeah, you know, uh, employees look, uh, look to you to kind of like make sure everything's like cohesive, like, you know, going in like a reasonable manner, like all that kind of stuff, let alone with like, you know, making sure everybody's like working well together. You have like different personality types, different age groups. It's, it's hard to like, balance all that stuff on top of like you know people's like oh i don't want to go there because like covid and like you know there's all these other like things you have to deal with but like yeah as a leader it's uh you know people look and kind of like expect you to kind of just deal with stuff deal with customer complaints all these like annoying things and kind of just keep everything going smoothly which is easier said than done keep steering the ship yeah Yeah. so what Okay, here's another one. So you obviously work with Jennifer, who yep. you're also in a romantic relationship with. What's that been like? Like, is there is there struggles? How do you guys manage that? Because yeah. that seems very complex. Yeah, people have asked that before. It's um, it it's, lots of people think like, okay, you know, you're with this person all the time. Plus, you're working with them, and then like, yeah, for some people, it doesn't work. Um. But at the same time, we, I guess, like, we, we both talked about this, like, lots of times. We both feel, like, when you're working with somebody as well that you're, like, romantically involved with, you're also growing together and, like, working towards something. Um, there's lots of people that are, you know, husband and wife. He works over here and she works, you know... Uh, in another city for another company. And then it's like each person has their like, uh, you know, uh, work husband and wife too. So it's like, we're more, I find it's better because we're more focused, not only in that respect, we're also focused like, you know, the same, like financially, we're also focused the same, like goal wise, business wise, entrepreneur. So it's good. Yeah. At times it's challenging. Like me and Jen are, different people we're very similar but like we're different um she's more like kind of outside the box creative very street smart like sees opportunities that i don't i'm more like traditional um i'm very like finance oriented and i'm more like yeah Yeah. analytical and like operational so i'm like strong with that and yeah luckily she's like strong with the other stuff so we complement ourselves very well um yeah, there's definitely difference of opinions, of challenges. Course. Like I wouldn't have, if like without Jen, I wouldn't have done half the stuff because I'd be like, oh, that's not going to work. Like I'm more like my dad, like, oh, like that's stupid. Like that's not going to work, whatever. She like, she did like, all this stuff for the, for the restaurant, all these like menu ideas. And it's like, without that, I, I, you know, I'd probably be in business, but like, I don't think we'd be successful like that. So it's a, it's good to have also somebody that like, you know, you're around every day and you can like bounce ideas off of one another and like talk about stuff. This will work. This won't work. Let's try that. So this isn't worth trying. What do you think about this employee? Like, yeah. What do you think? And it's like, it's a constant that, which is like, you know, it's good to have. Whereas like, you know, when you're, cause I'm also in business with my parents, like we own real estate together. So it's like, I'm constantly like talking to them, messaging them about stuff all the time. So I, I personally need that. And I feel like that's how you, you become successful and maintain any kind of like growth as well. Um, so yeah, having like a, 
a business partner that's also like, you know, your, your life partner is like, it's, it doesn't work for some people. For us, it's working for now. So there you go. No, that's good. I'm glad. No, it's just, it's something that I think, um, I mean, I feel like it either, I guess it's personality type as well, but I feel like it either really works or really doesn't, right? Yeah, it's true. But I know you guys also have like separate work times physically in the location normally, correct? Yeah, that's that's a tough part. And we're trying to like, you know, try to leave staff there more to be more self-sufficient so we can like have some time together. So like Jen usually is in the morning and I usually do the night shift. So, you know, when COVID first happened we when we reopened we were like okay let's do five days a week we did yeah five days a week and we had like we had our weekend together it was like a monday tuesday though but but it it was covid but (laughs) but that was yeah it was covid but but like that was necessary like having that time with one another was like you know we were willing to give up you know an extra day in business or whatever to have like that work-life balance so uh, the older I got in the last year, especially I've realized like how important that is. And it was very important like for our relationship as well, because we do need that time together. Like that's not work related. Um, and like you said, yeah, we are separate with shifts, especially when we were like working at, at its peak and when it was really busy, like she would have to go in at like earlier in the morning and like I would go in at like two, we'd see each other for like an hour or so. And then I wouldn't see her till I close at like, you know, 10 o'clock. Um, so yeah, that, those two days that we had, um, were vital and like now we've opened an extra day, uh, but we have, you know, we've hired quite a bit of staff, especially with COVID. So we're, we're trying to keep staff there, uh, you know, more self-sufficient as well. So, oh, I don't need to go in this morning or I can go in a bit later. And it's very important to have that, but it's really hard to let go. And that's the biggest problem that we have. And it's not even that like, oh, I don't trust this person. It's just like, nobody's going to do as good of a job as me, which nobody will. Maybe no. some people will. I think some people will, but it's like, I, I can't let go and I need to ensure it's success and that it, it, there's a problem. I like, I, I'm dealing with it and I'm aware of it. So it's hard to let go of that. And that's what we're trying to work on, but it's easier said than done. And you also don't want to, you know, lose everything because you're, you're neglectful or whatever. And like even employees probably don't like seeing like, Oh, they're strolling, strolling in later or they're not even here today. And then lots of people start getting ideas like, Oh, maybe you can, you know, mess around here. We can do that. They're not, nobody seems to care around here. So it's a hard, that's a hard balance. And we always thought like, Oh, we'll own a business and like, we'll just go visit quarterly or whatever. And it's like that, I don't know if that's possible for other people. It is. And other people have succeeded at that. That's something that in, always interests me. And I, I thought I could do it, but I, I'm really having a hard time with it, but we're trying to, you know, kind of find some middle ground there to get some, some, some better, like, you know, work life balance, especially like in summertime or something. Sometimes in the winter, it's like, yeah, there's nothing to do. It's like, whatever. Us work. Yeah. But yeah. But, but that's kind of, yeah, it's kind of what we're like, you know, want to focus on working on things. Yeah. yeah. So what do you see next for you guys? So is it another location? Is it selling franchises? What's the, what do you have a, like a, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan? Anything? You know, we talk about that all the time. We're, we're always like, okay, like, you know, we did this and then like, oh, it's a lot. It was too much. And then like, we all of a sudden start talking about other ideas and stuff. Like we're like, we keep like, not making the same, I don't want to call it a mistake, but like we keep like, you know, doing that where we're like, oh, that was hard. But like, that's, I guess what's the, you know, inside of you as like somebody that wants to be like a business owner. Like you, you keep thinking of like all these ideas. We don't really have anything set in stone. We, we talk about stuff, you know, franchising. I haven't, you know, I've looked into it. I understand how franchising works. And, you know, I think it's like, uh, Franchising is like a locations number. Uh, I know like there's lots of independent, well, independent franchises, I guess you can call them that I've kind of, you know, tried to execute that even in this city. And it's like, yeah, but I mean, it's a numbers game. Like when you're getting percentages and royalties and like, you know, all these like franchise fees or whatever, you got to have locations to bring in like, you know, each location I'm getting 20 grand or whatever a year. So it's like, 
you know, you gotta have hundreds of locations or like lots and lots of locations. So having like, you know, three, four locations franchise it, I don't think it's enough. Whereas like I can, I can make that money in like owning one restaurant. So the franchise thing, yeah, kind of haven't really, you know, looked into that too much in terms of multiple locations. We've thought about it, but it's like, it's tough. And it's like, we have very high standards. Like, you know, I know we're just like a takeout pizzeria, whatever. It's not, it's not like some like crazy (laughs) fancy place, but we do. I always wanted to be the best at what I do. Like I, I don't have much of an ego. I don't think, but like with that kind of stuff, it's like, I, well, I want to, it's like, it's my reputation. I don't want to be embarrassed of something. You know, I want to make sure there's like a level of quality, a level of consistency. And it's like, I'm struggling to do that with one location. Yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of something like I just have to keep, you know, sitting on and like talking about it with Jen. And then she kind of, she's, I'm kind of waiting for her to like, kind of give me ideas. Cause I'm more of like, uh, I'm a very aggressive and risk taker, but I'm also very like conservative and cautious if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very like, I'll like see what's out there an opportunity and I want to analyze it and I want to like execute it and like attack it, you know, you know, without any warning, but like I need to be very confident in what I'm going to do. And then there's, you know, the whole financial, like throwing tons of money here with like an unknown again, like, um, that was like very stressful, but like now it's like all done and over with. And it's like, it's, I want to do it again. It's kind of stupid. You know what I mean? So you guys know with like two locations, it's like, I'm sure you've experienced that. And it's like, okay, the first one was this, but then like you also get a different level of confidence and like experience. So it's like, it's not as difficult too. So there's a lot of things, but we don't have anything that's like really set in stone. And it's like, do we want to, you know, keep being in this industry? Um, And kind of you tie yourself down again with something new because up and running, you know, getting it started takes years. So it's like, that's a big commitment as well. No, a hundred percent. Like me and Carm, I mean, there's a, a Chinese saying it's slow, slow, fast, fast, which is what you talked about where it's, yeah. When you're in that planning process, you're very strategic, you're methodical, you want to analyze everything. And then when you see the opportunity, it's like, let's go and let's go now. Um, me and Carm, (laughs) Maybe by, uh, I, I'd say I'm more like you in the sense that I'm pretty strategic and I, I like to think about things a bit more and Carm's the complete opposite. Like literally it's just like, let's fucking go and we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, g- like our Grimsby location was literally, Carm was like, yeah, I saw a place corner over here. Um, I'm going to see it tomorrow. I'm like, okay. Like he calls me. I'm like, all right, sounds good. This is like February. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. And then, uh, he's like, yep. <clears throat> um, Sent over a mock lease agreement. It was just like that. Like I don't. I didn't. I did not see the. I think I saw the place once actually before we signed the lease. That was it. Yeah. And we had like we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into. So yeah. And it's 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 like challenging. It's scary. But I mean, we we had confidence in our ability, and luckily we have um like a core group of people that work with us that we were very confident that that we could build around them there. Um, shout out to like the the four people that we have there right now like Shelby, Alicia, Peyton, Isabel, um, just like a great team of people there, yep. um, which has made our life a lot easier. But I'd say like the biggest challenge for us, and I'm I'm sure you feel the same way, is is human resources, is HR. It's getting people that you can trust when you're not there, right? And yeah. that's that's probably where I think in both of our industries, it's a, it's a human industry. So like scale becomes a problem. Yeah, for sure. That's the thing. Like training people, picking the right people you know, let alone if they show up for work, like all those things. And it's like, that's the one thing where I think a lot of people fail or like, you know, there's lots of businesses that are very narrow minded. They'll see things like, I'm going to run this business and like, it's going to be me and my wife. And then I'll just hire another person. And like, you know, instead of hiring another five or 10 people and growing, they'll be like, oh, I'll take that money for myself. So instead of wasting it on employees, like I'll make that money and like I'll be more profitable. But it doesn't work like that. You need to expand. You need to hire people. You need to have the overhead. You know, every industry is different. Like you guys might not need as many people People. because it's it's like, yeah, yeah, you have like baristas or whatever. Whereas us, it's like, oh, 
in order for you to walk to the fryer and then walk to the pizza and then answer the phone and then catch somebody out and then go make some pasta and then go sheet some more pizzas and then fill up the toppings. Like you need six people right there. Yeah. So other places of the pizzerias I see, I, I don't know. I walk into the pizzerias and there's two people there like on a, on a busy night. Sometimes there's three and I'm just like, how are these people doing it? It's like, I get it. A lot of them have like, you know, electronic orders, like through the apps and stuff makes things a lot easier. Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, how much business are these people doing? Like, that's the thing I don't understand. So a lot of people are like narrow minded in that respect where they're not wanting to invest in it because it's true. It's like, yeah, you have like, you're starting to pay like a hundred dollars an hour in labor. It's like, you better be making some money like for sure. And that's scary. But in order, in order to grow, you gotta, you gotta like do that. You, you have, have to. to invest in your business. And if you're not constantly investing in the business, don't expect to get anything out of it too. So that's, that's kind of the, 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 you know, the biggest lesson I've learned. I, and I luckily was fortunate to kind of know that growing up because I would see like, you know, my parents had successful businesses that I'd see other places that were like, you know, they were working somewhere for like 30, 40 years and they like, never had anything at the end of it to show for it. And it's like, oh, I guess they were just like working at a, at a job, paying themselves minimum wage, which is great. But also like, I never wanted to be like that. I want to like always grow. I want to push. Yes. The older I get, the more like tired I'm getting, the more like, uh, I don't care about that. I just want my, my time, you know, my personal time. But in terms of like being like an aggressive business person, I think that's one of the most important things you need to like like focus on, yeah. I would say for like any new people opening a business. But at the same time, when you're opening and you're new, you got to be really cautious. You got to be like, you know, seeing what the numbers are, what's happening, what business is out there, what your real strategy is. And then yes, obviously grow as each year passes by and like numbers always have to make sense. Number one. And like, you got to be very confident and comfortable with your product and you know, what you have to offer. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I, I agree. Like it's, it's a balance of, you know, the aggression when it's right. And then like being cautious, taking your time, yeah. thinking about things. How old are you, Ted? Uh, I'm going to be 35 in September. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. So coming up. So I got grays and stuff already. <laughs> so I've had grays for a while. But no, per- perfect. What are you going to do? Perfect. <laughs> final question then. Um, what, what would you tell your 25 year old self? Oh, that's a tough one. What would I tell my 25 year old self? Ah, uh, I mean, I would, you know, myself or any other 25 year old, um, just make sure that you take all the risks that you want to and have wanted to at that age and even younger, because you have time to recoup if something doesn't go right or you make some mistakes. Making mistakes are fine too, but, you know, just take all the risks that you want to take. Like, don't look back. It's similar to what we did. It's like, I, yeah, maybe we have some regrets, I guess, but like at the end of it all, like I saw this through and that's what I wanted to do and like Jen as well. Um, So at least we saw it through. You know, had we sat there, had our job and like, you know, nine to fives are great. Weekends are great. Um, vacations are great as well. Uh, unlimited, especially, <laughs> but, um, yeah, take all the risks and like, don't look back. And it's like, you know, you want to like live your life and, um, you know, see everything through any kind of thing you've always wanted to do. And the only way to do that is just to like go forward. Um, you know, Lots of people are always hesitant with like businesses and like, oh, it's going to cost so much. And like money is never the problem. Yes, it is. If you're talking like millions of dollars or whatever, but like financing a business, like that's never a problem. The problem is like executing it day to day, seeing it through, you know, working through it. So yeah, definitely just take all the risks and just, you know, go forward within reason, of course. That's awesome. Yeah. No, thank you. I'm 25. So I appreciate it. All right. I 10 appreciate more years. That advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so l- lastly, just tell everyone where they can find Roland Pizza, where you guys are, Instagram, all your handles, whatever. Just give people sh- shameless self-promotion. Let's go. Yeah, for sure. So 314 Lake Street. Uh, we're in St. Catharines, single shop, um, kind of hidden a little bit uh, um, in the plaza there. But um, rollingpizza.ca, 
Don't ask me about social media stuff. Jen's going to kill me. I don't know what the handle or whatever is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's Roland Pizza Inc. Because Roland Pizza was taking something. But <laughs> Roland Pizza Inc. on Instagram. Google us. You'll find us. Uh, yeah, we're open. You know, only closed Tuesdays. So open every other day of the week. Uh, so yeah, any vegetarian, vegan options, pizza, pasta, wings. No more subs. <laughs> Carmen's upset about that. So I always, <laughs> I know he gives me you grief. shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'll surprise him one day. I'll order some and uh, bring him one. But uh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ted, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. For sure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.